Welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. Uh, here we are at part two of our Minmus landings. We're coming up on the dark side of the moon of Minmus here, so we're going to go ahead and just uh, fast forward a little bit while I talk to you. Our uh, last mission saw us flying to Minmus. Um, it didn't go super well. We missed uh, on our first approach. We actually messed up and were rendezvousing with the moon instead of with Minmus. We were able to correct that. Then when we were depending on a deorbit or a burn to get into orbit around Minmus, a comfortable orbit that is, we missed it by 10 minutes, uh, started to burn to try to make up for it. We're burning in the wrong direction, wasted a ton of fuel. Um, that said, it looks like our, our fuel just barely held. Um, we have enough spare fuel in these three cans to fully refuel our lander if it is empty. Um, we can do it four times, plus the lander has fuel of its own. Our plan was to land four times. If everything goes well, we might be able to get a fifth landing out of there. We also had a slight glitch when we realized that our dedicated scientist who we brought on board to help process these experiments. Um, we don't have a way to get him home. When I brought him on board, I was thinking that I could return to Kerbin in the lander as I did in the previous mission. However, when designing the lander, I had specifically designed it around not having parachutes so that we could uh, just save what little weight those amount to and uh, use it as a dedicated landing craft. So we will have to do a sort of rescue, rescue of course being in quotes there, mission when we return to Kerbin to save our scientist. Um, that said, our lander here as we're coming up on sunshine again. Ooh, actually coming up on sunshine reminds me I should probably grab a reading just above the Midlands. I don't think I have that one. I think I have high over the Midlands. High over the Lowlands. Um, uh, do, do, do. Oh, well, uh, I'll figure that out at another point. Um, so what we're going to do is we have duplicates of all of our experiments here. We've got our gravioli detectors, we've got our seismic detectors, we have our thermometers. We're going to run double experiments just to make sure we squeeze every bit of science out of those. And we also have two goo canisters. Now with the science lab, I am under the impression that I can remove the goo from the canisters, bring it to the science lab, and then clean my canisters. Um, I don't know if I have to transmit that data back. If I do have to transmit it back, I'm hoping two canisters plus the bonus from the science lab will bring me close to 100. Um, I'm hoping for at least 90% of the science uh, awards. And then I'll be able to reuse the goo canisters to go to another site and another site and another site, etc. To do that, we have our dedicated scientist and we're going to bring Jebediah down into the science lab so that he can learn how to do on the ground stuff. Uh, that'll prepare him for a desk job, <laughs> like Jebediah would ever do a desk job. Um, let's go ahead, I'll talk while doing my landing checks here. Landing gear looks good. We need to make sure that we fill the monopropellant that we used. Liquid fuel should still be good. Um, think. So Jebediah will go into the science lab to assist in running the science experiments. I was thinking I want to land here, but I'm a little high over it. We're still going to go for it. What's the worst that happens? And while Jebediah is doing that, Bob, who is our second most seasoned astronaut, will man the command module. Uh, TAS on, roll so the controls make sense. 
get out of the firing range here. Bob will take control of the command module so that he can get experience with that. Meanwhile, Bill here is getting much needed experience landing. Um, and so therefore every crew member will effectively go through a promotion which brings up the fact that if I do come up to rescue our scientist when we get back around Kerbin um, the interesting thing of all of anybody who has any flight experience at all is currently in space so who's going to fly the mission to go save them uh, I don't know um, I might do an unmanned probe or or I could leave the science module floating around Kerbin and uh, rendezvous with it a la the Agena space missions. A few problems exist in that. One, it'll have no power. Um, I won't be able to move it at all. We won't really be docking. It'll be a bit of debris that stays up there. But that said, that would actually be kind of, uh, kind of fun. And in terms of the role-playing aspects. How much have we used here? We've used quite a bit. We've used uh, about 60 units to try to get this landing site. Now, of course, um, the as I was saying, the role-playing aspects of it that uh, you go up, you run some science experiments, and then everybody leaves you. And as you're like, oh, but I want to come back to the planet too, just kind of kick him back into the science lab. It's like, no, no, you're good here. Um, nice thing about landing on Minmus is that almost all of it will be done using our RCS thrusters. That said, let's make sure this engine is on. Uh, so our liquid fuel really can be saved for realigning ourselves for rendezvous. Actually, while I'm thinking of it, might as well figure out which direction I need to go to catch back up to my ship. It's going to be 270. I thought so, but I just wanted to make sure. I should have been able to figure that out just by looking at 90, but you know, it's it's late. Math is, although one of my strong suits, not when it's late. I, I make mistakes. So let's go ahead and do an EVA here. Just above the Midlands. Apparently I already have that one. I don't think this counts as Midlands. Um... So yeah, we're, we're going to use monopropellant mostly to land, and then we'll use a lot of monopropellant to take off, and we'll just supplement it with small amounts of our main engine uh, using our liquid fuel as necessary. Liquid fuel, of course, going to be the limiting factor for us getting home, because that's what we need in our mothership, not monopropellant to get home. No idea the terrain height as I never do but I did put some nice lights which are obscured by goo canisters but maybe they'll give us a little bit of a, a little bit of an early warning system it's kind of a nice picture there the hills Kerbin, the moon the sun Definitely didn't, uh, where I am in orbit, I was not planning on doing any nighttime landings, so these lights aren't as great as they could have been. Actually, I should have angled them down more. Um, the other lights tend to shine further into the distance. These ones are wider. So I just kind of just kind of went with them for the sake of, well, honestly, situations like this, where I can't entirely see what the ground looks like. Currently, we are minute from the surface. Excited. Actually, let's go ahead and grab that EVA while he's excited. <laughs> Didn't like the way that he sort of got in and then decided to stop. 
just above the flats. It's good, good data there. Of course, our landing speed needs to be below 12 meters per second. Of course, that's under Kerbin's gravity, so we could probably hit 15 and be okay. Not that I want to, but it just uh, to be aware of. Let's go ahead and bleed off more of this speed. Let's look at our resources here. Used more mono propellant than I would have liked. Uh, I definitely got greedy trying to come for this landing zone um, immediately after the Darklands and or the dark side rather. And uh, going for it right away, I probably should have picked a better landing site so I could have eased in, used less fuel. But no time to think about that kind of stuff now. I've used over a hundred units of mono propellant. which is way more than I was anticipating. Uh, I don't have any shadow, so I'm not sure how high up I am. I can tell I'm getting pretty close burn just a little bit of this engine. Looking very close now. Twelve meters per second. meters per second, much nicer. Just looking for signs of those lights. Six meters per second. Very, very flat here. Looks like this will be a, a nice soft landing. There are the lights. Beautiful. Uh, 135 left for mono propellant. Not perfect, but uh, less than four units of liquid fuel, fuel used. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to grab our gravity detection. We're going to grab our second gravity detection, as I said I would. We're going to grab our seismic data. We're going to grab our seismic data. We're going to grab our thermometer. Grab our thermometer. Uh, uh, grab our goo. We observe the goo. Grab our goo. We observe our goo. Let's go ahead. Grab a crew report. Let's extend our ladder. We'll do our EVA. You feel a bit like a superhero when you jump in the low gravity. Nine, ten meters. Got to be careful with uh, with the jetpack here so that I don't accidentally achieve orbit. Which, you know, I, I wonder, it would be pretty close. Let's take our surface sample. Yep, 
you sneak a taste of the surface sample, ew, uh, we'll plant our flag. That's a bit of an exaggeration. There are other really gross shoes women can wear, but that is uh, that is Bill's assist assessment of the situation, anyhow. very much behind our lander but we're going to come in at a much lower angle so what we're going to do here is when we take off we're going to head 270 and we just want to try to match the plane that that lander is on so that we don't um, we don't waste more fuel than we have to uh, to go 270 would be to go in that direction which oddly enough we can just do even on the surface here so, without further ado, let us uh, take off here. Bill leaving our landing site behind. At 100 units, we'll uh, start using our engine. Make sure we're not going to crash into these hills. We should be good. I already have an apoapsis of about five kilometers. It's our hundred units. Fire up our engine very, very gently. Again, just make sure I'm not going to crash into these hills. Looks good. Our inclination looks good. I'm dipping a little low. good. Seven units of fuel used so far. <coughs> Just going to do what we can to widen out this arc. down a little bit, even it out. Coming up on uh, 10 units of fuel. At 15 kilometers we'll take a break from burning any fuel and uh, reassess our situation here. Actually, this is just as good a time as any to stop burning our fuel. Um, we're going to go ahead, we're going to grab some readings here. Just above the Minmus slopes. We're going to rotate our craft upright. Do our EVA. Oh, apparently now we're in lowlands instead of slopes.
what is required of us to get into orbit here. And we want an orbit that is close a mere 74 meters per second. And that is actually the added bonus of putting us very, very close, well, I mean within three kilometers of our parent craft. 3.4 kilometers on that side. That actually looks very good. We're going to go ahead, we're going to set up on that trajectory. 20 seconds to make that burn. Now we're just going to go, and we just want to get these two points as close as I can. Zero point two kilometers is pretty frickin' close. So that said, we are just going to uh, enjoy the ride as we head over. hoping for more Midland data. Apparently I already have that one. This is looks like what will be our second landing zone that we're coming over now. At least that's the plan anyway. Looks like I'm out of gravity scans I can do. Should be able to grab that EVA though. The Great Flats. Hopefully our next mission here. Oh, this looks like it could be a new bio biome, um, possibly the highlands. Nope, slopes. Midlands. Let's go ahead and get us uh, 25 minutes currently in our video. Oops. 
which means that by our old mission standards we would just almost be uh, arriving at the moon. Don't want to blow by this as we have so many times in the past here. Um, 1.5 meters, so we're going to spin ourselves around, get set up, facing retrograde versus our target. Let this slow down or get closer. And we will use our mono propellant. We will now face towards our target. Two hundred and eighty six meters away. We'll be uh, arriving with roughly 90 units of monopropellant left, which is a fantastic amount. <laughs> way less than we anticipated and we've used a paltry 17 units of fuel or less than that 16.28 units of fuel I am coming up from the rear of the lander, apparently. That's okay. I'm going to have it turn on its lights anyhow. Twenty-two meters away from us. We're going to go ahead. We're going to switch craft. Lights on. Oh, jeez. Apparently I wasn't approaching the rear of the craft. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that would have been disastrous. Apparently I was spot on, um, but that's okay. Now we know. Uh, one of the reasons you put lights on, right? I should have known from the three lights from the engine, but oh well. We've drifted eight meters during that break. Spin ourselves around here. Switch over to RCS thrusters, docking mode. And uh, let's just walk ourselves in. be nice if this window right here somehow showed where your docking port was in relation to theirs. That would be pretty cool. I mean, it kind of does with this, but... Sometimes the uh, camera angles you're allowed to choose from don't quite help. Even if there was a view that was just from your docking port. Looks good. Boom. Connected. Alright. So that went very well.
a few things to figure out now. Um, first thing we're going to do is wait until we get light. I mean, it's already four days into the mission. We've earned a couple hours of rest while we get some light here. There we go. Our batteries are all fully recharged. We're going to close Um, I don't know if I set up my action group. I don't think I did. We're going to close our panels so that when we're flying around outside the ship, we don't accidentally tear them off. And we're going to go ahead. We're going to, uh... Yeah, you know what? We'll just have Jebediah do the work. I mean, he's the commander, but doesn't mean he can't get his, his hands dirty. not entirely how I wanted these ships to dock. I like them to be uh, crew port to crew port or crew hatch to crew hatch, but actually pretty nice that uh, this crew hatch is in line with all of my experiments. So I'm going to take credit for that even though I just absolved myself from credit of that. I'm going to take. I'm going to take. I'm going to take. Nothing in either of those. Store that experiment in there. We're going to collect the goo data. Removing the experiment data will render this module inoperable, I am sure. Uh, we're going to actually go ahead and fly around here. Not that I think I'm going to run out, but that would be terrible, terrible having the mission commander out doing grunt work and then getting lost in space. gigantic head getting in my way a little bit here. three experiments that could not be stored. Um, they are probably all duplicates. So we'll put them back in here for now. Temperature scan, seismic scan, gravity scan from the flats. Okay. All that I know are definitely duplicates. Jebediah sneaking around to the back door here. We'll go ahead and board the science module. Ooh. If I go ahead and I clean my experiments, I think I can still keep that goo. <laughs> we 
which means I would be able to get the full value upon returning to Kerbin, which is good. Um, so, Jebediah here. Just going to take this data. One of them could not be stored. But that's okay. The duplicates we will store. Ah, the duplicates we'll store in the science lab. Okay, come on now. Not my hands are on the wrong keys. It's sad how often that happens to me. Take those three. And when we come up for the quote unquote rescue mission, we'll take those science data and we'll, I mean, it'll just be duplicates, but at least that mission will have some scientific merit. All right. So here we are 37 minutes in, and we are just about ready to begin our next flight. Uh, we need to go ahead, of course, and refuel. Bob not enjoying the feeling of having fuel leave his ship to go into somebody else's. Bill not terribly excited to know that his ship is getting more fuel, making him have to go back out there. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll just try to empty this one out entirely. Oh, apparently that Bringing that up canceled my fuel transfer. All right, and last but not least, we need to fuel up. Oh, that's mystery goo. I don't need to fuel the mystery goo. Well, it's mysterious, so I might have to fuel it. Um, Refuel our scuba tank. And we'll go ahead and refuel our main tank. Topped off. All of my experiments should be ready to run again. We're going to deploy our solar panels. We missed our opportunity to land here, but it looks like we might be able to still land in uh, this area here, though to do so would require a burn, and I'm not ready to do a burn to try to touch down yet. Um, I do want to try to land on flats because I can identify flats as different biomes and the highlands and lowlands get a little tricky. So bear with me here as we speed ahead.
that, of course, coming on to the dark side. That looks much better. So, we will control from here. We will go ahead. We will undock. Up. Oh. We'll make sure we're controlling from this side, so we'll make sure we're pointed retrograde. And we shall undock. good. Once we are fully clear, we'll execute that burn. We look good. Bill, not looking happy, but we'll see you guys in a bit. Just gonna try to take off a bit of that edge. Um, that is a little shot. Oh, granted, I mean we're on minmus, so it's not the biggest deal in the world if we're a little sideways. We will go for fuel conservation over comfort, <laughs> and I'm almost positive that any reliable space agency would do that the other way around. Um, if you have extra fuel, you would spend that fuel to make sure your astronauts are comfortable and not panicked, but that's not the way we do things here in Kerbal Space Program. This area here looks like a nice depression, so let's go ahead and try to grab a scan out of it. I'm almost positive I have a gravity scan on the Midlands. just a minute over, I was thinking about getting greedy and going to the mothership to see if I couldn't get a high over wherever it is that we are reading, but um, I don't want to risk it, that's a little too close. The Lesser Flats, EVA, Let's go ahead and start slowing ourselves down so that we do not crash, but rather gently land. Make sure our engine's still on. It is. Theoretically, when our two ships were docked together, I should have made sure this engine was off in case I wanted to do a course correction. Which is another uh, reason to go ahead and save that liquid fuel, by the way, is to make sure that when we run out of 
these big easy to hit biomes we can uh, do a couple course corrections and try to hit some of the other ones three seconds above the surface. just about 100 units of auto propellant now. Now we docked last time with a uh, with 100 left in our tanks. So that's going to be the threshold that I consider a good landing. <coughs> Excuse my voice cracks there due to the anticipation of a second touchdown. Nice and gently now. Oh, we have a shadow. Always very, very helpful in determining how high up we are. Let's get ourselves down to about four meters per second. Six is like four. Looking very smooth here. Bill, very excited. Touchdown for the second time this this day. We're at 48 minutes real time into this mission. Normally around now we would be doing our final checks to uh, land back on Kerbin. A nice gentle touchdown. Boom. Beautiful. Beautiful. This very squat lander not falling over at all, unlike our predecessor. Of course we don't have two science juniors on it, but you know, that's okay. I'll never let that go. I'm, I'm sorry for you guys. Let's go ahead and observe our mystery goo. Let's go ahead and observe our mystery goo. So that's gravioli. Gravioli. Really? Gravioli. From the lesser flats, that's where we are now. got our seismic data, we've got our temperature, we got our two goos crew report. Let's do our EVA. Take our surface sample. Do our EVA report. We'll jump for joy. I mean, these are magnificent places to land. 
just wide, flat, open, just absolutely beautiful. Can't ask for a better landing site than uh, the flats of Minmus. Certainly a very different set of experiences from landing in that canyon. Bill's gonna go talk to Bob. And really not understand where all that panic came from. Alright, that said, we're, uh, we're good to go. We used no liquid fuel during that. Two seventy, of course, in the same angle that it was last time. We will have those hills that we just need to make sure that we clear. We should be good to take off here, 52 minutes. Hopefully I can do another smooth rendezvous. Silent takeoff. Just a little bit out of our main engine here. Again, we want to try to keep our angle consistent. Oops, wrong way. With our mothership here, just to make docking that much easier. thinking I was in a much heavier ship there. Got about two minutes. We'll set this as our target, of course. Four kilometers, 18 kilometers. So we should be able to, to juke that a little bit as we get closer here. Turn off our RCS. Set up here. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, used. Used a lot of monopropellant doing that that I didn't think I was using. That's a little 
a little sad. I mean, not awful, but certainly not what I was aiming for. I think, uh, based on how the last landing went, monopropellant will be the limiting reagent here. Um, I still think I'll be able to get the five landings out of it, but... I mean, how insane would it be if we could push this to six? With careful fuel and resource management. And how much better will it be if we push it to six and then don't have enough fuel to get home? gives us four more minutes to come up with. I mean, our nodes look pretty close here. That looks very good. That looks very good. Um, what do I need to do to kind of ease that out a little bit? We are at 1.4. 4.3. Not that 1.4 is bad, uh, it's just with the, the cross of angles there, it looks like our approach speed is going to be a little, a little intense. So we're going to go strictly Prograde, I believe 44 was the number. good. 41 meters per second. Doesn't look like our fuel tolerance is going to be quite as tight on this flight as it was on the last flight. But like I said, uh, the way that the ship is budgeted, we have enough fuel for five flights of using all of our fuel. So every time we use less than that, we, uh, we're banking it for another flight. Bill looking worried. Just don't want to blow past this. this out so we can see real-world data. over. I mean, just the slightest amounts, tiniest taps. Half a kilometer works for me. How long until that happens? 41 minutes. RCS thrusters off for now. Solar panels are still open. Yes, yes. Let's go ahead and bring us around. 
we're actually going to pass ahead of our mothership, and then we're going to catch up as I swing over around the other side. Theoretically, I should have been watching this one because it looks like uh, if I would have managed my fuel better, this area would have come down, but um, the angles might not have worked as well. So I'm going to stick with what I got. It works. We're on the dark side, which means that we're going to slowly lose power, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Six minutes to go. Four minutes, three minutes. There's our lander, or our mothership, where the lander. Okay, we're going to spin ourselves around to kill off any speed difference here. We have used a third of our budgeted fuel. Oh, so I just whip through mono propellant to turn our craft. meters per second. Bill, very excited. You can see his friends off in the distance. Or the not so distance as the case may be. Now this time we are definitely coming in from the back. side. Passing over to the front of the ship now. Okay. We're going to roll our craft so we have regular controls. We're going to turn our craft face our friends here. We're going to switch to docking mode. go. Got a few coals in the fire in terms of uh, ways that we're moving here, so we're going to try to cancel all those out. 
I used to only try to move one direction at once, and I think I even talk about that in uh, my last video. And uh, when I'm close in, that is absolutely true. Especially when I'm getting the feel for a vehicle. But uh, setting yourselves up so that your craft is rolled in such a way that all of your controls immediately make sense to you is such a huge part of um, of being able to dock well. And uh, not 100% as good as last time, but we're still pretty much in line, which is fantastic. We're going to uh, quickly refuel and transfer these experiments, and we'll call that this video uh, probably about 100, uh, 100, well, an hour and 10 minutes. And uh, yeah, overall pretty pretty happy with the way things have gone thus far. The last video was filled with peril and uh, fortunately this uh, this part of the mission has gone incredibly well. Um, we've done that one so we're going to grab it from the opposite side because the two are linked in terms of weight balance. So we've got that filled. We gotta go ahead and just get an angle on this. Nope. Bill and Bob, neither one too happy about the refueling process here. Coming up on the four day mark in space. I, I can understand being a little grumpy if after four days you're told, hey, no, we're not done yet. Get back out there and work. Okay. And then last but not least is the liquid fuel. Not that we used a lot of it. Um, I'm actually very proud with how little we did use. There we are. So to recap the fuel situation, um, at the end of this, after this refueling process, we were anticipating having these can't... oh, did I? That was foolish. government work. And what about oxidizer here? 5420. Did I not fill the oxidizer on this? I did. Oh. I got them backwards. Boop. So less liquid fuel on this one than we did in the last one. Uh, 54.20. Okay, so anyhow, like I was saying, by the end of this refueling, I was planning on having these three tanks and these three tanks being 100% empty as they are. Um, we have 13 units of fuel left in this, which is about how much liquid fuel we used the, in the last mission. I mean, give or take a unit of fuel. Um... These are both empty as planned. This is practically full, and uh, this one is a th uh, less than a third. But so fuel tolerance wise, we're doing a lot better than I had anticipated. Um, uh, an hour and 10 minutes is what I promised, and here we go. I'm already blowing past that. Let's go ahead and get Jebediah to uh, go grab these experiments.
Did I not grab si I, must, I had to have grabbed seismic data. I'm not that stupid. <laughs> I am that stupid, but I'm, I'm hoping I was not that stupid this time around. those panels back in. So, especially as I'm whipping around here willy-nilly, I want to make sure. Five of my experiments cannot be stored. No experiments left to grab there. get in. Alright, so in here we have 6 data, in here we have 24 data, and in here we have no data. So 24 is pretty awesome. Clean those two experiments. And as that's being cleaned, we'll go ahead and close out this video. Uh, very successful, two landings so far to two of the flat areas. Um, plenty of fuel tolerance, uh, plenty of fuel left well within our tolerances, and uh, we will we'll be ready to go next time at the start of our next video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.